Welcome back everyone to SuperCloud 7. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here in Palo Alto. Dave Vellante, Rob Schuster, the entire CUBE team, Savannah Peterson, the whole crew is here, breaking down the future of data. This is a big, big community conversation. Yasmin Ahmad is here, product executive, data analytics and AI for Google Cloud. Been on theCUBE recently at Google Next. She's back to bring her perspective. Yasmin, thanks for coming back on theCUBE for this special SuperCloud 7, getting ready for the next data platform. Indeed, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. You know, you're in the middle of all the action and Google's share is up, looked at the market share numbers, look at compute and IaaS, a lot more growth going on at Google on the IaaS side, compute, storage and networking, obviously a lot of DNA there at Google. But the data conversation is <laughs> happening, a lot of people hosting a lot of data on Google, but not just Google, multiple clouds. So the idea that distributed computing now has become the normal standard people are striving towards, which is great because that's what computing is. Distributed computing with data requires data to move around. It needs to be mm -hmm. addressable. So this is a big problem right now that people are trying to solve because the opportunity cracking the code there is that if you can get that data architecture nailed down, mm -hmm. the results are more democratized data scientists capability, better data analytics, better generative. So there's a lot of like table setting going on right now. Mm -hmm. and yeah. What, what's your reaction to that? And I think even though some of the challenges might sound like they're the age old challenges, actually challenges have evolved now in the cloud. When we think about data, it's not all sitting in one place. It's not practical to also bring it together into one place. In fact, when I look at our customer base, every large enterprise is multi-cloud. You, whether you intentionally chose it or it happened to you. you know, it's mergers and acquisitions. It's the fact that you've used a SaaS application mm -hmm. that's now generating data on Google and Azure and, and, and AWS. And so this idea of really being able to connect data and leverage it for Gen AI is top of mind for the, the execs I speak to. And particularly with Gen AI, until you don't have a great data foundation with all types of data, these Gen AI models are hungry for data, for training, et cetera. So being able to connect that data, no matter where it lives, bring it together, so important. You know, one of the things that we talked about at Google Next, I remember we had this conversation about open data formats as well as mm -hmm. some of the AI stuff that's going on, especially with the developers. If you look at the data market right now, um, it's certainly evolved from the old school data warehouses to data cloud. Yes. Okay, so data warehouse in the cloud, check, been there, done that, Snowflake, really leverage that heavily. Mm -hmm. Now with the Databricks growth and Snowflake kind of retooling on their side, a lot more emphasis on developer, machine learning, AI, now gen AI. But you're starting to see the formation of two things, the old school analytics, which has been around for a while, yes. you know, and so, but it's still changing and relevant. And this new data engineering category, mm -hmm. that's what we call it. So we did a survey and I just want to share this with you and get your reaction to one that, and also the developing categories. Uh, data storage and warehousing, big popular area, mm -hmm. Snowflake, uh, Teradata, a bunch of other ones, Google, you guys have the stronghold there. Um, transforming data, okay? Um, visualizing data, mm -hmm. ad hoc data analysis, and then building apps on top of data lakes yes. or data platforms. Mm -hmm. And then the new categories, this is where new emerging control points are happening. The AI ML piece, and the data catalog management yes. are rocking and they're changing. Those are potentially swing categories that could change the landscape. What's your reaction to all that? So 100% agree with, with those trends that we're, you're seeing in your uh, survey. So like we, we like to say at Google that actually every Gen AI problem is actually a data problem to be solved. Yeah. And so getting that data in shape. And the challenge has been as we get into Gen AI and now multimodal Gen AI, images and video and other modalities, actually you've got to feed those Gen AI models also with multimodal data. So though, today when we describe the AI Ready Data Foundation, it isn't the data warehouse of yesterday, it's a multimodal data foundation that can handle PDFs, documents, images, sensor data, all in one place. But critical to those catalogs and those trends we're seeing is you've got to be able to manage all of that data. And it, you can't have different management mechanism, metadata for your unstructured data, for your PDFs, is your structured data. For, for enterprises and companies, they need a single access control plane. They need a single, single governance control mm -hmm. plane, a single catalog. And so that's really what we're focused on at Google is how do we provide that ease of an AI-ready data foundation that comes with that single control plane 
where actually that data foundation supports all open formats, yeah. whether it's Iceberg, Del Delta, Hootie, because data today lives everywhere and it needs to be interoperable. It needs to be movable. It's interesting you mentioned Hootie. Uh, we had one house on here, founder, former Uber um, architect, actually created the first lake house idea at Uber, but then you know they didn't commercialize it and then actually Databricks jumped on it with Spark. But the idea of a lake house or a data lake or platform is to bring together multiple data systems, mm -hmm. whether it's a columnar store database, yes. mixing with some SQL, and then bringing it together and writing some glue layer between them. Mm -hmm. And I'm oversimplifying it, but that's the idea where it all started. How does that look like today? Because the reality of today is applications need to get data super fast, mm -hmm. very low latency, mm -hmm. and be intelligent, which means they got to know is there data available? Yes. And if it's available and they can't get it in time, the app doesn't do well and hallucinates. So this kind of new architecture seems to be right front and center. Is that the way you see it? 100%. And we talk about unified platform today. So our BigQuery um, offering has actually been on a journey. And just at Next, we launched the unified platform BigQuery. And actually today, BigQuery now contains multiple engines underneath it. And the reason for that is exactly as you described. You've got that single AI-ready data foundation, mm -hmm. but actually what customers and users and data engineers and scientists are looking for are different ways to access and process that data. Not everybody is using SQL, not everybody is using Spark or Python. So you, we need those multiple engines to accommodate BI workloads, to accommodate engineering workloads, for AI machine learning workloads. And that's really changing the paradigm of what a data platform architecture yeah. looks like. So talk about the role of data engineer, because now we're getting into the kind of the, the I'd say the changing roles inside an organization. Mm -hmm. And obviously team building, team chemistry is big on teams, but also the persona of the new role may or may not be developed now, Gen AI could help. But the old school data analysts, they built products like dashboards. Mm -hmm. Now the product conversation is, how do I organize the data or data engineering happens? Yes. Now, I don't think they're mutually, I don't think they're one without the other. I think they both exist. How do you see productizing data evolve? Because, and then how does BigQuery, for instance, solve that problem? I mean, I mean, how do you create a product around data? Yeah, very interesting question around how are the roles evolving? And then how is data being seen as an asset, as a product within organizations? Now, what's really interesting to me is Genii has different roles it can play. Mm -hmm. So for our customers, they're using Genii to solve customer experience use cases yeah. and operational efficiency across their manufacturing pipelines. But actually, internally at Google, we're also seeing a use case around Genii for actually supporting those data teams and actually helping the emergence of the future data team where data engineers, analysts, scientists, the roles are evolving. So with Gen AI assistance mm -hmm. and now more agentic-like capabilities, mm -hmm. you actually have Gen AI that's able to support that entire end-to-end -end data to AI workflow. So today you've got Gen AI that can do synthetic data generation better than humans can do. You have Gen AI that can build data pipelines, monitor those pipelines, look for anomalies, detect insights, bring them to mm -hmm. users. And so we really see as we bring what we call Gemini in BigQuery, as this assistance that is always on, that 24-7 mm -hmm. always on assistance, it really changes the game for those data teams. Talk about how that uh, evolves. Because I, I like what you said there, because we'll get into the agentic, the agent side. I've been a big fan, I said this at Next, I think I was yelling at the top of my lungs all week. Agents are the killer app, in my opinion, because it frees, frees up people's time. But if I'm a data person, and I'm playing with SQL, I'm doing some, you know, a lot of programming around the prompts and, and SQL, and now I pick my head up in the past year, the whole world's changed. Yes. How do I get involved? Like, what do I do? Do I just download BigQuery? I want to take advantage of some of the new Gemini stuff. What, what is someone that wants to kind of cross platform skills, develop their, mm -hmm. their, their base do? I mean, sometimes it's just they're, they're in the silo and everything's in, every hammer looks for a nail. Mm -hmm. I'm a SQL guy, gal. I want to, I know SQL. Now I don't know unstructured data. So how does someone move into say that this new emerging, I call horizontal data play? Yeah, really good question. And actually I have to admit, a couple of years ago at our, our <laughs> events at Google, what we heard most from customers as Jenny I just started to um, take hold was Google, you're doing so much innovation, but how do we adopt all of this innovation? It's, it, there's just so many new features, so, so many new capabilities. 
So what we've spent a lot of time doing is actually creating a combined data to AI stack, all the way from the foundational infrastructure layer to the, to the models, to Gemini, to the AI platform with Vertex, to the data platform with BigQuery, to even the BI platform with Looker. And the goal is actually, Gemini should not be hard to adopt. It should show up in the surface where the user is. So if you're a SQL user, that assistance is in your SQL panel as you see it. If you are a BI user, again, Gemini or that AI assistance shows up in those um, dashboarding environments. Uh, there's new conversational interfaces yeah. that are now being blended in. So I very much see it as Gemini is not this other technology or tool like we've traditionally seen that you have to go mm -hmm. install and learn. Yeah. It's actually being infused right through the data to AI stack in the existing technologies that data so engineers So I would agree this is being infused. So you, would you say that your advice would be then to look at areas where GenAI impacts your current role mm -hmm. and then how you can sequence into other areas? Absolutely, I think for data teams, it's leveraging that assistance, which today is assistance and in the future moves towards more automation agentic frameworks. So yes, leveraging it where you are today and then as you look at how GenAI impacts business use cases, yeah. it's really identifying where are those use cases where traditionally maybe data analytics hasn't touched those use cases. We've seen use cases in a lot of back office, yeah. document processing, um, optimization, which traditional data analytics didn't really touch because yeah. we didn't have the tool to really process speech to text, to do video analytics, to do multimodal analytics. And today with the multimodal data foundation, yeah. because we're building that single access control layer, it's all single yeah. govern. Actually that multimodal data is accessible via SQL. So it doesn't require net new data. What are, what are some of customers doing? What are some of your customers doing to establish that kind of new layer? Because I think you're right on. I think there's been this analytics market that's dashboarding. Mm -hmm. We've seen that chatbots kind of hanging around, but they were really driving more the end user. How to, here's some reports, yeah. here's the things. And then the platform engineering from the DevOps side kind of brings up that data engineering, more of a platform developer mm -hmm. vibe. I think KubeCon meets Gen AI almost in my mind, where you're seeing more engineering of big data sets, platforms like data lakes. That's mm -hmm. not like a data analytics, data science problem to solve. That's more of, you know, the data wrangling and the data science has always been on one side. I mean, you're talking about like an SRE kind of mindset, like a Google SRE or data engineer set up these data sets. It's a little bit, a lot of different crossover points. How do companies establish that new layer? I mean, what do they do? What's the playbook? Just yeah. go to BigQuery and say, give me some AI and put some agentic AI features in there. What's the, mm -hmm. what's the playbook? So, so for us, the, the key thing is the GenAI model should just be accessible to you right there where your data is. So we're bringing GenAI into the data cloud so that actually you don't have to do the hookups and the pipelining from data to AI. It's just available. So when I think about BigQuery, you connect your data in. Again, no matter where it lives, whether it's across clouds, we can use BigQuery Omni for cross-cloud technology to connect data in. So HCA is a great example. HCA always had their traditional structured data about mm -hmm. patients. Now they are actually um, bringing in physician data, which is more medical notes, doctor's notes. HCA is customer. Yes, they are a customer. Okay, and they are then augmenting that with further multimodal data from x-rays and MRIs, so image-based data. And they bring that all into Big Lake. Um, they connect that data together under that single control plane. And then actually their analysts now have access to all of this really rich data. And because of the integration between BigQuery and Vertex, these are new integrations we've just built over the past year. You can run Gemini models right on top of that data. But if you think about a customer like HCA Healthcare, very mm -hmm. sensitive data. So the way we've built those integration is your data never leaves your data cloud. There's no risk of that data. So are they building on top of BigQuery or mm -hmm. Vertex? Which, so Vertex is on top of BigQuery. Big the data is in all BigQuery runs all the data. BigQuery and Vertex are, are integrated, which means actually a user who's most comfortable in the BigQuery environment, maybe writing Python, maybe writing Spark or SQL, they can actually call Vertex, model garden, large language models, without ever leaving the BigQuery environment. 
AI engineers, on the other hand, we find tend to want to go start in Vertex and tinker with all of yeah, the of large course. language models. Of course, they want to play around. So let me ask you a question. So if I'm a SQL engineer and I want to play around, mm -hmm. how do I get involved? Just move my data over into BigQuery? You connect your data to BigQuery. And uh, from SQL, we have functions that let you essentially call. You can call Gemini on top of that, that data. It's as simple as that. Got it. So what are you working on now? You said you're going to go to a customer after we have this interview here, jump on a plane. Um, are you talking to customers mostly? What does your day look like? What does your weeks look like? I mean, mostly customer work, how much product? What's the mix of your time? How do you spend your time? A lot of customer work right now. Um, I, as we were talking about earlier, so many choices in this landscape, this shifting landscape that yeah. we're moving through. And as customers adopt these multimodal AI ready data foundations, there's work to be done there to yeah. get the data into good order for Gen AI. So lots of my time spent talking to customers about how do they get set up with that AI ready data foundation. And then moving to what are those Gen AI use cases that they're looking to unlock. Um, so uh, when I look at our, our kind of day, lots of time spent with customers, but also lots of time mm -hmm. internally spent with our DeepMind teams, our Vertex teams, and other teams looking at what is the future. Because Gen AI models are not standing still. They are rapidly evolving, and we are seeing new capabilities um, as we move versions of large language models. I was talking to an analyst um, over the weekend, um, just happened to be at the, the, my family event that happened, um, just asking me about IoT, because they work for a truck company, um, big, big, I won't say the name of it because I give it away. Um, they're looking to move off of the, between Snowflake and Databricks. And I said, hey, have you considered Google? I'm like, well, does Google do that? So there's awareness there. Mm -hmm. But the use case actually is perfect for Google because it's all a lot of unstructured data coming from the vehicles. Mm -hmm. And so they want to be in the data business. They recognize, the companies already recognize they want to be in the data business because they know that the future of their fleet yes. is going to be data. Mm -hmm. So. I'm like, well, I like the Databricks, got the developer angle, but Google's got, got a nice data lake. Snowflake's very strong on analytics. If you have that already, they have a little bit of Snowflakes, but then they're trying to decide, do they go Databricks or Snowflake? They like the lake house idea uh, for Databricks. Um, but when people see what BigQuery is, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot more integration. So how do you get the awareness out? How do you talk to that person? Because they're not techies per se, but the techies are also might even decide what they do over here. So the shifting landscape on the buyer side is one, mm -hmm. the customers still have needs. Yes. Because that's an analyst saying, I value the business side of it, mm -hmm. the business model. Now they're probably going to go into engineering and say, well, we already got terra, uh, a data warehouse. Mm -hmm. Well, that was from like 20 years ago. Yeah. So they got to upgrade. So that's kind of the use case. We're seeing a lot of these, like, okay, we've got some cloud for data processing, but we have a core data warehouse. So the things like controlling the, 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 the management side of it, the governance, mm -hmm. become either bottlenecks yeah. or accelerators. Mm -hmm. How do you see that evolving for those kinds of customers that are, that are really at the point where they're making a business decision like, we're going to be out of business if we don't reset? Yes. That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like some of them just have been kicking the can down the road Mm -hmm. Finally go, okay, if we don't move now, we're going to be out of business. And yeah. some have bet on something, but might want to transition and add something else to it. What do you see? What do you, what's your reaction to that? And what would you say the market is right now? Yeah, so we are seeing a lot of that in the market. So firstly, we're seeing a massive actually shift again from on-premises into cloud. It slowed down last year, but actually now with Gen AI and Gen AI being really in a cloud game, we're seeing a huge shift from legacy on-premises uh, platforms up into the cloud, so lots of customers doing that. But also, even customers who had moved previously to the cloud, maybe early adopters of the cloud, had taken certain decisions, now reevaluating Because Gen AI has changed the game. We're, customers aren't just use, looking for a lake house like BigQuery provides, they're looking for a lake house that can be AI ready with all of the integrations and can do it at speed, efficiency, they're thinking about cost. Mm -hmm. They want the full data to AI integrated stack. And so, you know, as I speak to customers who made decisions earlier in their journey, they're actually re-looking at yeah. some of those decisions to say, what's the right technology for me now moving to the future? How do I not get left behind in the Gen AI game? And who's delivering that innovation that will keep me ahead? I, I would say that I'm, I'm hearing the same thing and I want to get your um, additional comment to 
the cost side too, because that's mm -hmm. also a driver. Yes. You know, I'm spending way too much on compute, I don't need to. Or I need more GPUs, but I don't want to over provision. So what are you seeing on the infrastructure side? Because that's now the, where the action is. The data is coming very fast, but yes. we're seeing all the pressure points on understanding compute, networking, and storage, and when it's fitting for the use cases in Gen AI. Yes. What's your take on that? So number one, the models are fast evolving and we compl we expect even internally, the infrastructure is getting cheaper, the models. So the whole landscape is going to change mm -hmm. in terms of the cost of Gen AI itself. But also as we've done benchmarking, one of the reasons why we focused on that integration across data to AI is we see huge efficiency in that. When we've benchmarked BigQuery against other data platforms in the market, we see actually 4% better perform, four times better performance, and three times better cost mm. of actually having Gen AI models close to the data executing. You don't have the latency of data movement mm -hmm. between your data cloud yeah. and a Gen AI model, but also the security concerns and the, and the complexity of having yeah. to build pipelines that all adds cost. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons, as we look at our strategy, a big focus is that unification, it's that simplification. How do you create an architecture that really benefits from yeah. what Google's strength has always been? The and the integration, yeah. the integration of the different components gives operating leverage mm -hmm. and also flexibility as things become more programmable, like give me more compute for these reads or writes yes. than I need here on storage or networking, move packets around, moving data around. Yes the infrastructure is behaving differently. Mm -hmm. So it has to be programmed. Yes. That's a big part of what Google's doing right now. A hundred percent. And we are doing it not just for customers who want to use our data to AI platform, but internally in Google, we have many services that actually run on that mm -hmm. same data to AI technology. And so for us, you know, that Google's foundational technology yeah. layer is where we do a lot of innovation. And for, for, for me, customers should not have to think about that. That should, that's going to be a problem that is abstracted away within the architecture, the infrastructure. They should just worry about their business use cases. Yes, I mean, it's always great to have you on theCUBE. You're very knowledgeable. It's great to have the perspective. You know the product, you know the strategy, you talk to customers. For the folks watching right now, whether it's that IOT person with the fleet or someone in a large enterprises that's now going to transform very quickly, to an uh, established web uh, and cloud native developer team. What's the pitch? What's your pitch to them? What, what plug would you give for Google AI and analytics? What's the story? How, what, what do, how would you explain the value proposition if you had to put the plug in? Absolutely. So for me, Gen AI is really changing the game for data and analytics. If I look at the full spectrum of how traditional teams have worked to get insights across the organization, it has been highly manual, highly laborious, and yet there's many business users with many questions that remain unanswered. I spoke to a customer who said they had 16,000 dashboards across the organization, yet they felt insights poor. Gen AI is going to change the game in this space. With some of the new conversational analytics experiences that we are launching, you see Gen AI actually using the human natural language interface to let any business user yeah. with a question be able to get answers. And it's not just those business users, we see the same for those data teams that are working behind the scenes on data engineering pipelines mm -hmm. and complex data science and analytics. Gen AI today is that assistant who's helping you code faster, but as we move into kind of this agentic world, we're seeing agents being able to actually learn tools and build pipelines on the behalf of the data engineer and actually accelerate data analytics um, to a degree that's never been seen before. I think the agent is a big deal. I think trust, security, and truth, and yes. having accuracy is going to be really big, really important. Yes, and we agree. So this yeah. is where when we, <laughs> the world has seen so many chat experiences with, with Gen AI, but as we build kind of chat with business data, we see it differently. Chat with yeah. business data has a higher bar of trusted answers, yeah. accuracy that organizations expect. After all, you can't make a decision on something that is hallucinated <laughs> or approximated. Or a bad chatbot. I was on a chatbot, sir. I won't say the name of the sir. It was so bad. Clearly a knowledge database. It was just canned answers. Mm -hmm. I'll maybe get an agent for you. It was complete. It was not a neural network. It was not even close to good. No. Compared to what's out there now. I mean, mm -hmm. what you guys are doing with Vertex, some of the new tools coming out. Once you hit that neural pathway, 
it gets smarter on the retrieval, the data at scale is yeah. really valuable. And you, and you can't just rely on out-of-the-box large language models. Yeah. So our conversational analytics is powered by a large language model that is grounded in the semantics of your business. So it mm -hmm. actually understands your business context, your business language. And then it's got real-time access to the database, to the data sets. So it can come back with insights that are up-to-date and trusted. And we're doing a lot of innovation also on the UI yeah. side yeah. because it's not just about generating a response that response needs to come back with a visual that shows where that insight came from. It needs to be a multi-turn conversation where yeah. a business user can do chain of thought prompting mm -hmm. and have a conversation, a dialogue with the large language model. And all of that requires actually a layer of innovation on top of yeah. large language models before you just release them in the world. Well, with your Cube presence now, multiple times coming on, we're going to have an agent for you with all your <laughs> knowledge you're sharing. Thank you for coming on the Thank Cube so SuperCloud 7 sharing. Really, the data is changing so fast and companies are going to impact their applications directly and that's going to change the data in there. This is the whole premise of SuperCloud 7. Check out Google BigQuery and Vertex integrations. Again, at the beginning of this big wave, getting the data right and the governance is going to be the real pivot area that's going to make the successful agents work. I'm John Furrier, theCUBE. You're watching SuperCloud 7. We'll be right back after this short break. Mm -hmm.